Yes, this is so sad, man. And when we done, I make them buy me ball, man. I'm on some dumb stuff. By the way, what he say? He can tell I ain't missing no meals. Come through and fuck him in my automobile. Let him eat it with his grill. He keep telling me to chill. He keep telling me it's real that he love my sex appeal. He said he don't like I'm bony. He wants something he can grab. So I pull up in the Jag, made weather with the jab. Like dun 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 dun. guys this is girl sammy back with another video and today guys i'm back with yet again another reaction video <sighs> now as you guys can tell about a title <laughs> i feel like once i did one video of this i have to do multiple so today we're gonna be reacting to euphoria season two episode seven the breakdown now the only reason i'm reacting to this is because i'm trying to re-watch i mean not re-watch but Here's some points that maybe I missed in the episode, but man, that episode was fine. I don't like how they ended it though. I just thought like we should have got an hour long episode for real, cause you gonna end it off with Maddie just walking, and clearly something gonna take off, and she gonna be upset. Clearly, but dang, we could have got a little. Just give us like two, five more minutes. I don't know, dang, you know. Shoot, I'm, I'm just ready to see a breakdown, you know talk about it and then get into the scenes in the other videos but before we get into the video don't forget to like comment and subscribe for more of my videos also let me know what other videos you guys want to see in the comments down below and um let's get into the video all right guys here you go let's see we're ready the penultimate episode of Euphoria Season play. 2 was Lexi fantastic. Did that, bro. Apparently, Samantha did see Maddie on the alarm clock camera, and as a result, she gifted her the I sparkling know dress she, as a good away gift since dress. Maddie plans on leaving town once she graduates high school. We learned that just like Jules and Elliot, Rue and Jules haven't spoken to each other since the intervention. Yep. Kat has begun to cam again, and Cassie and Nate have gone public with their relationship. Yep. Jules burnt the CD of her and Cal, and yep. now we know why Lexi dressed up as Bob Ross for the Halloween party. Episode 6 ended with Luke telling Gia that she felt like she didn't know anything about her life anymore. In Euphoria Episode 7, Gia went on to say that her memories of her father were fading, and Rue responded mm -hmm. by saying that there's no way to stop that from happening. Which is very that true. That back and forth spoke to the framework of this episode. Lexi put on a play about her, her sister, and their friends, yep. and old memories resurfaced. Yep. Before putting on the play, Lexi shared her concerns about it with Fez. Yeah. Lexi worried that people might get upset about it, but vowed that her intentions were good, and for the most part, they were. But it was a mixed bag. Let's break this down by the good, it the bad, and the ugly. It's only the bad if you see it as bad. That Lexi had read to Rue. Yep. It's called what this That was very, you know, their friendship showed a lot When the five episode. main characters were introduced, Cassie kept a straight face, so it's unclear whether or not she realized it right away. But Maddie and Cassie were immediately concerned. <laughs> Whereas half of Rue's mouth began to crack a smile. Rue was happy. This is life. Not everyone's life. But our life. <laughs> and our I life. love that. Scene one was Cassie going through puberty. <laughs> it's a mom cheering her on. She's real. And Rue was like, here we go. <laughs> Cassie began to get tense, but Lexi threw out every possible compliment to Cassie. So, so far, so good. So far, so good. Sue's in the crowd loved it. Loved Lexi it Lexi had dreamed of being as beautiful and as cool as her sister. Hi. <laughs> it's the mom. How are you? But when that time came, she wasn't. A young Rue convinced Lexi that it was okay to be different. Exactly. This was before Lexi's dad left and before Rue's dad died, mm -hmm. before Rue did heavy drugs. Yep. It was before they grew apart and before Lexi started doubting herself every time someone would ask her if Rue was her best friend. Mm -hmm. As this was happening, Rue looked over at Jules and Jules looked back, but they did not make eye contact, at least not, not yet. yet yeah. Lexi recounted Rue reading at her father Robert's wake as well as the good times with her own father dancing along with her sister and mother mm -hmm. and that brought both of them to tears mm -hmm. in the audience the good kind of tears the play covered the first and presumably only time that lexi smoked how rue drew a beard on her and they joked that she looked like bob Ross. yeah on their way home lexi said that she didn't like weed since she couldn't control her brain the mm -hmm. way she normally could. i feel that and rue countered that for her that's the best part 
So Lexi hypothesized that Rue used drugs to push away the bad thoughts. Mm-hmm. But for her, it did the opposite. Right. All she could think about were the bad thoughts, mm-hmm. things that could go wrong, right. the people that she could lose, and the million and one reasons why she wasn't good enough. Mm-hmm. Then the street lamp went out, yeah. symbolizing the moment that Lexi and Rue grew apart. Around that same time, Maddie's parents began fighting, so she spent a lot of time With, over at Cassie. Yes, this is Maddie so Maddie seemed confident to Lexi, and she probably was at times, but she was also hurting, and Cassie was there for her. So this part of the play reminded Maddie and Cassie that they once loved each other. Exactly. Cassie was so moved that she went to the bathroom in tears, and Maddie saw that. So although Lexi was a tyrant of a director, her play was a catalyst to some positive change. Rue and Jules kept looking over at they each other eventually... and eventually made eye contact. And even Cassie and Maddie began to reflect on the good times together. But while that happened, Fez ran into some problems. Faye ironed Fez's outfit and helped him get dressed for the play. But then Custer came over. He whispered to Faye to keep it cool. And unfortunately, Faye is yet to tell Fez what is really happening. I feel like she low-key... Ash was already suspicious of Faye in the previous episode, so he kept his eye on Faye and Custer. And then he sat down across from Custer with a knife up his sleeve. So Ash is ready to do the dance, yeah. a sweet steel song, a knife in his hand, and a foe before him. Unfortunately, Fez never made it to the play, and we will learn why in the finale. Yeah, I can't now, see. the ugly. I'm ready to see Aaliyah why. told Leslie to shower Gia with love, and she has begun to do so. Leslie told Rue that Gia is struggling to sleep and struggling in school, mm-hmm. so going forward, Leslie is going to focus on her younger daughter. Yep. Similarly, Sue's let Cassie leave the house, and now... She's in the audience as Lexi's number one fan. So both Sue and Leslie are now focusing their efforts on their younger daughter. On their younger daughter. It's actually understandable. In fact, Rue said as much. That's fair. But there was some very ugly stuff in Lexi's play. Lexi's play is based on memories. But the thing about memories is that they are subjective. As an example, when Sue's and Gus had split up, Gus drank a lot. Lexi still remembers the day that she told her older sister that they should call their mother for a ride. But Cassie convinced her not to. So Lexi got into the car and was terrified down to her core. Gus drove poorly, evidenced by the horns beeping in the background. Yeah, but thankfully, he got them back home safely. I felt bad. Her was melting. Not long man. after, he got into a nearly fatal car crash. So Lexi's fears were more than justified. And the point is, memories are subjective. So scenes in Lexi's play can mean one thing to one person and Trump something completely some... different to another. Yep. Case in point, the dance number. I love the, dance the dance number, number. was incredibly homophobic. It was but so funny, the audience though. laughed. Even Jules laughed. By this point in the play, most of the students realized who was who, so a few of them looked over at Nate to see his reaction. He was so fed Maddie up. Maddie and Kat knew that this would hurt Nate, so they loved it. And Rue and Sue's loved the spectacle of it. The audience gave it a standing ovation. Oh, standing ovation, ovation man. Fucking but again, yeah, it. it was incredibly it. homophobic. That, Don't get me wrong, did I laugh? Yes. But was it right for me to laugh? No. Definitely not. Nate has been suffering from nightmares about his sexuality. He dreamt of Maddie, Jules, Cassie, and Cal. It's very traumatic for him. It's unlikely that he's the only high school student struggling with his sexuality. But this scene in the play hit him hard since it was about him yeah. and the students knew it. So Nate walked out and Cassie followed. Nate went on a break up with Cassie, her. telling her to get her stuff and move out of his house. The so wackiest that, Cassie break up. went back to the play fuming. She's One so of the crazy. biggest questions going into the finale is, how far into the current timeline is Lexi's play going to go? Not for real. The second part's kind of sweet. Is it? Since Cassie is on the brink of raging, we may never get that answer. Regardless, the play has brought about I love, a change. I love it. And there's a great drist of word in one set. I love the play. Change is not always growth. But growth is often rooted in change. A winding valley where every bend may reveal a new landscape. I love the play, man. Honestly, I'm, I, I feel like everybody loved the play, uh, Lexi's play. It was really nice. And just, if you really understood every single point she was getting at when she revealed a memory or put a scene in a play, it was really beautiful. Like, really. It, if a play was made about me and I didn't know, you know, either I'm going to be insecure or I'm going to accept my flaws. Some of them are insecure because, like, they don't accept their flaws and they don't understand. Clearly, nobody was really that offended because it's like, they know that's them. They're true to who they are. It was, they thought it was a little creepy at first. You know, well, Maddie and Kat, they thought it was a little creepy. Like, did she really make a play about us? 
But after a while, they put it together like it's really not that bad. And I honestly liked it. I ain't gonna cap. I really liked it. I liked every single thing in this episode. I love the play. Like if I if I see something like this in real life, man, I'm definitely showing up. If you saw a play like this, let me know in the comments down below, and I'm gonna fly up to where you at, be in the audience to watch. Cause Lexi did that, and I kind of figured it was gonna come together nice. Cause. Lexi's very intellectual and she's very smart. You know, she analyzes and observes a lot. So I figured this place gonna come together nicely, man. I already knew, bro. I already knew. But um, yeah, um, the main thing that stood out to me in the play though was Lexi and Ruth's friendship with how like how close they were. Even even Ruth smiled at the fact that Lexi, you know, saw her as her best friend for the longest time and they eventually grew apart. And it's odd that Lexi understood that they grew apart, but she would still always help Rue whenever Rue needed help. That's what Cassie had got on to her, got on her about, I think the previous episode? Yeah, I think episode six, she got on her about that. Like, you allowing this drug addict to use you, but you wanna talk about me. I forgot what the conversation was, but I know she said that to Lexi and Lexi really felt that. And it was true. You know you fell apart. You, you and Rue's friendship is, is nothing now. Like she, Y'all friendship isn't what it used to be. Y'all are on two different spectrums now and the only time she really come to you is when she needs you to cover for her or something. That's not a real friend, you know? Um, yeah, I didn't understand why Rue and Jules kept looking at each other like they felt the best friend part, I guess, or something. Shoot, I don't know. It didn't make no sense to me. It was just maybe they were just looking at each other just to look at each other, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions on this video, how you guys feel about this euphoria episode how you guys feel about episode eight the final because i'm excited cassie's gonna go off well let's hope she go off and she don't just be dramatic because i seen the trailer and it looked like maddie was just chasing her around so let's hope she would do something this time you feel me i'm um, gonna hope let's hope everything's okay with fess and all that because he really didn't ever make it to the play like really really and it's like i couldn't tell if he was showing up late or he was about to be on time and he just ended up not making it, you know, based off how the thing was going or whatever. Um, but yeah, like I said, let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions on this video. And I'm going to catch you guys for the next video. Bye.